This episode of the Pivot to Balance podcast is sponsored by Riverside.fm, the leading platform to record studio-quality podcasts from anywhere. More than 70,000 other podcasts use Riverside, including myself, Gary Wee, Spotify, even the New York Times. What's amazing about Riverside is that when you're recording a podcast or remote interview, Recording is independent of Wi-Fi stability, which is huge because content is recorded locally, which ensures reliable and uncompressed content quality. It is super intuitive and easy to use. Once your recording is done, you'll automatically be able to download separate audio and video tracks and edit your content with a few clicks. If you use social media, you also get magic clips from Riverside, which I love. So if you haven't tried Riverside yet, visit riverside.fm and use my code AK15, which is A K A Y 1 5, to start recording studio quality sound and video and get 15% off of a membership plan. Once again, it's riverside.fm. Use code A K A Y 15 to start recording today. Hey, before we dive into this week's episode, if you've been enjoying the show, I love your support. Take just 10 seconds to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps others discover the wisdom and inspiration that I share on the Pivot to Balance podcast. Let's build a community of balance seekers together. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to share the love. Now let's dive into the episode. Hello and welcome to the Pivot to Balance podcast. I'm your host AK and I hope you're doing well. In a world that pulls us in a million different directions and with a billion distractions, finding balance can feel like an ambiguous quest. Join me on this podcast as I try to navigate life's twists and turns with mindfulness, purpose, and grace. In each episode, we will dive into topics like self-care, personal growth, mindset shifts by sharing practical insights, stories, and maybe even interviews. Get ready to pivot to recalibrate and find your balance. Follow the Pivot to Balance podcast and I will see you on the other side. Before we get into this week's episode, Happy New Year, everybody. I am back and I'm feeling better now. And I'm just glad that I have my voice to record the first episode of 2024. I can't believe it's already like mid-chan and the time is just flying. But in today's episode, I want to talk about something very important that I have been reflecting. And 2023 was such an amazing year for me. And the fact that I'm going to say this for the last time because that's the whole point of making this episode I was able to achieve all of the goals almost like 95 96 percent of the goals that I set for myself in 2023 and I've never said that out loud not in most cases not to a lot of people and I will talk about that in today's episode in this episode we're going to talk about the behavior of downplaying and why I'm talking about that how what I've learned from my experience that's just what I want to share today Downplaying is nothing but we sort of diminish the importance of our thoughts, our feelings, and achievements. In my experience last year, when I set out with a few goals and I started achieving them one by one, I started hearing people tell me that, hey, you know, when you say you're going to do something, you end up doing it. Or they would tell me, congratulations, it's such an amazing thing that you've done and such a big accomplishment. And I often found myself saying, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. Anybody can do that. If I can do that, you can do that. And it was never about, you know, receiving what they were saying. I was always defensive. I was always trying to make them feel better, even though that was never the case. They never wanted anything from me. I wanted to understand if it was coming from a place of humility or if it was interplay of social and emotional intelligence. Because even internally, I didn't feel as happy or proud as I imagined the situation to be. And I think social intelligence is nothing but our ability to sort of understand and navigate social situations. And when we downplay, we're often trying to like align with everyone around us and we don't want to be that person that is peaked, right? This reflection led me to recognize how much downplaying is intertwined with our social and emotional well-being and also the way we think about ourselves and think about other people. And when we talk about emotional intelligence, it's the ability to sort of understand and manage our emotions because that plays a crucial role, right? When you're, let's say, for example, that your friend, you and your friend had the same goal. You achieved it, but that other person didn't. You will end up downplaying your success at that moment, right? So that's what that's where emotional intelligence is used. So I think in a lot of ways, downplaying can be a form of emotional self-regulation, helping us manage our feelings and avoid vulnerability. And 
I just started thinking how much of downplaying is good and how much of it is not good. Excessive downplaying can truly mask your own true worth, right? And what you feel, what you've done. Because I think it's important for all of us to recognize the small wins that, you know, we collect over the period of time. And I think I did a really bad job at it last year. Just not help, just not giving myself the time to recognize that, oh my God, I have actually achieved X, Y, and Z. And I was constantly downplaying everything in order to like make everyone else around me feel like, oh, you know, you don't have to look at this. I don't want your attention on this. I don't want anybody to see this. And then I started thinking, why not? Because if people around me are the people that love me, so why shouldn't I be vulnerable? Why shouldn't I, you know, celebrate my success? Not that, I mean, if you think about it, success is such a subjective term because what's success to me might not be success to you and what's success to you might not be success to me. So I started thinking, how do I address this and how do we address this? So I think the number one thing here is self-awareness. Number one, you being very mindful and observing yourself in situations like these. When someone tells you, hey, you look beautiful, do you say, oh, you're, you're joking? Or do you say, oh, thank you? Because I think in that moment, it's not about what the other person thinks and more about what you think about yourself. Why do you immediately get defensive? Why do you immediately get, oh, I don't want your attention on me. I don't want to seem, you know, vulnerable or I don't want you to see me for me. Like so many different thoughts that go in your head. I think it's important for us to take a step back and think about how am I going to respond to this and why am I going to respond to this this way? The second thing is journaling. I have read my journal so many times and I have thought to myself, this situation seems so big at the time. But it was, but it is nothing to me now. So when when we start downplaying incidents, I, I I would say go home, write about your feelings, what you said versus what you could have said. Because when I started doing this, the, for the past one month, it's not been that long. I started seeing a pattern, and the pattern was I didn't want anyone else around me to feel like I was doing better than them. Because I think that is a trigger, right, for so many people. You don't want anyone to feel like they can't fit in with you. You want everyone to feel like they can be your friend, they can be your colleague, they can be your mentor, etc. But I think with time, people grow. And some people outgrow people, some people don't outgrow people. It all depends on two-way relationships. It all depends on two-way communication. So I think if you start downplaying yourself just because you don't want to lose your status quo, I think you don't have a status quo to begin with in that situation because you've already either elevated or you're becoming the person that you're supposed to be. And I think it's okay to recognize those events in your life and level up the way it's supposed to. The third thing is question the why. Understanding your motivations, whether it's fear of judgment or a need for approval, it's so important to understand these things because they are key for emotional clarity. You need emotional clarity when it comes to these things because success, celebrating, or even like failures, everything is connect. Everything is connected to some sort of emotional aspect of it, right? There's some emotional aspect to winning. There's some emotional aspect to losing something. And when you start understanding that, the way you respond to things differ. Why do we all like watching award shows and how people respond to them, how people thank people? All of that is because we want to learn from them. We want to see... You know, what are the emotions like in that moment? What are they saying? Who are they thankful for? But I think when you are in that situation, how do you respond? Why do you respond that way? And the fourth thing is expand your emotional vocabulary. Because the better you can articulate your feelings, the less likely you are to downplay them. So, for example, if someone's going to come and tell me, hey, you know, last year you did so many things. I've started saying thank you. Uh, I did. I did. You know, I did want to do all of those things. But I think this year is all about just me recognizing that and building on top of that instead of having new goals. And I started saying that out loud because I couldn't accept it last year. I couldn't tell people that, hey, you know what? I wanted to achieve X, Y, and Z, and I did that. Not that I did everything, but I did what I wanted to do. So when you start saying these things and acknowledging that, you it starts to become a part of your identity. And I think it's important for you. If you've read the book Atomic Habits, they tell you like what you speak 
is who you are. It's not the exact phrase, but I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase here. Whenever you identify yourself as someone, that's who you become. So if I'm going to say, oh yeah, I achieved three or four of my goals, I'm that person that achieved three and four of our goals, and I have a record of achieving these goals. The fifth one is practice self-compassion. Recognize that, you know, just because you downplay doesn't mean that it's a reflection of your worth. Maybe you're coming from a place of humility. Maybe you're coming from a place of, you know, fear of judgment. Maybe you're coming from a place of, I don't want to feel like I don't belong with the people that I'm surrounded by. It's okay that you've been doing that. But it's not okay and not fair to you for all the hard work and everything that you've put in. The last thing is talk to your friends. Talk to people that you've done this with. Talk to people that you really know and ask them, have you seen me doing that? Why do you think I do that? Understand all of these things. Start to think about it. Journal and see how your self-perception and expression changes. Observe that. Take your own time. Observe that. I think one of the worst things that you can do for yourself is to not recognize your own worth because you've put in the hard work for it. You've sacrificed for it. You've put in the time, effort, and so many other things for that. And I think it's important that you celebrate yourself first before anyone else does. And that's all for today's episode. I hope you found it useful. And go grab a cup of lemon water, and I'll see you in the next episode.